Okay guys, welcome back to the channel, it's Alex here. Um, so we're just in the clamp that we put the barley silage in the other day, barley silage, uh, barley silage. Um, it's kind of interesting stuff. It, when they were trying to roll it in, they couldn't get it humped up, I think I told you that, very high. Uh, whereas maize, we can obviously get the edges up really steep because it really kind of works well. This, they were saying, was like just a pile of marbles. And actually when I pick it up, there's no compaction here at all. Okay, we're at the front of the clamp, but you know, this, that is completely soft. There's no compaction into that face at all. When we're talking about the maze, which is over on that size, the maze is really hard. You can really compact it in. So it's gonna be interesting to, as we go back into this barley, just to find out, you know, how it, how it performs really. Um, it's very light to touch. There's not a lot of, not a lot of weight in a handful. Um, so I think we're going to have to really up our feeding to try and get it through the plant, get the necessary tonnage that we need to produce the biogas. Um, so yeah, it's just going to be an interesting process. Uh, I'm sure we'll be feeding, uh, trying to feed as fast as we can to get this through the plant. So yeah, it's going to be interesting process. Very interesting. Um, so yeah, in other news, what have we got happening? Uh, we've managed to get our new heat exchanger on and it's doing a great job. Um, the temperature in the kiln, which is just here, has gone up last week before we had it on uh, when we were using our old um, uh, nano ecotainer dryer. We were getting in the sort of mid to low 40s maybe. I just checked overnight now and it's, it was a cold night last night. We had a little bit of rain as well and it got up to it's 50 degrees in there. So in the day, it's gonna be even hotter. So that's just what we want to dry those logs down. Absolutely fantastic. We are not losing any heat through the cooling fans, which is another good thing. Um, but I'll just show you how it works in operation. So here we are, coming round. We've got, this is your main uh, control, just switching it on and off. And this one here, there's a button here that I can uh, set the revolutions, the spinning time. At the moment I'm doing 674 revs per minute. It can go up to 1250, that's kind of just too much um, but what is also quite cool um, and we've got hopefully this is going to be installed uh, it, this will go on the return pipe and I can then set um, what I want the water to go back at um, so it will always be going back at say 50 degrees or 40 degrees whatever I decide to set it back at um, so that's like a really neat feature because obviously revs per minute is fine but when I don't know you're in the uh, you're in the middle of the night, it's much colder than during the day, it's it's going to be sending back the water too cool as compared to the day. So that'll just be a nice way of of, um, of just sort of, you know, using up all our available heat and making sure we're drying the logs the most efficiently. So that's good. Uh, we also had um, our walking floor mended, so I'll show you the, the work that we've done there. I had the guy, Mick from Wood Tech come out and he agrees that the ram is going too long on that and that's why it's ripping uh, out the floor uh, where the ram is attached. Um, so he's gonna try and make some adjusters for our, for our rams to shorten them up. So hopefully it won't stress the floor, but we're just gonna take a look at that now. Okay guys, I'm just by the second digester and you can see it's completely gone down. So yesterday we had some high winds and uh, the uh, pressure relief valve, which comes to this chimney here, which vents if the pressure gets too high. Um, that came off that, that connection bit right there. And um, they really struggled to put it back on. When they did get it back on, it wasn't holding the pressure. And previously, um, we had some patches which you put over on the other side, which were stress fractures. When we first got the bag, we didn't realize the pressure had to be quite high and it started to crack uh, the bag so it didn't form a seal over there. Um, and so I put, I taped up some, some, some patches on the bag. Uh, they've come off. So my job today is to get this blown back up and I'm gonna use a blower to do that, handheld leaf blower. That'll push it up. I can then get round the back and reattach the patches with glue and hopefully get us back working again uh, on the second digester. At the moment, the engines are still running, but the gas is going down very low. Um, the tank is still working normally, uh, uh, but it needs to, we need to get ourselves back running because uh, we can't support the two engines and the boiler on just the tank. We need the bag working as well. So that's my job today. Okay, so we've got two blows on. This one here is an electric one. 
and that's going into the gas extraction valve and I've got another one over here which is petrol which has got a bit more punch and uh, that's going into the PRV valve that's just down there and gradually this won't take too long now to fill up and I can get up on the other side and mend those patches so yeah hopefully away we go so there we are we're slowly getting up um, we'll keep pumping now and give another 20 minutes she'll be up I'll be able to be up on top and start having a look at some of the patches on the bag and finding which one's the problem case so there we go okay guys so the bag is up and I've identified where the flap is it's just that little piece just to see if I can do it just right there um, so I'm going to have to get up I'll put a ladder up the side there and I'll clamber up on top of some of the glue and sort that bit out and then we'll be back running again I'm going to take one of these long ladders put it up the side and scramble up with my glue just which one do I go for hmm agony of choice so I'm up on top here guys this is the central hatch where we can access things um we've got some previous patches here and these are little rip stress fractures um they're slowly leaking out gas and here's the flap so i'll get that all pasted back down bring up my glue probably have a little look at those ones over that side it's nice and tight this so i'm pumping air in um this could probably hold a tractor up here there's so much so much volume of air in here um so there we go have a little look at that one a bit of previous bit of glue maybe coming off but anyway now now to get down the side and back up again. Okay, so I've got my glue and got the ladder, got some patches in my pocket and a paintbrush. Up we go. So I put down some of these circular patches on those stress fractures and then I'm going to glue all this um, and slowly pull back this cover sheet here, try and get the glue down again. Um, and yeah, I'll just go from there really. See if she she holds. She should do. Um, she's in pretty good shape, so it's not too bad. I got my pot of glue, my brush, and then we'll do some of these ones over there, which are just starting to just starting to lip up there. So that'll keep them going. So that's that put back down. I've glued it all. A few little corners here, but hopefully that'll hold pretty tight. And, uh, turn the blower off start to produce gas and it fume out for a bit till the, all the oxygen's used up and away we go there's the wood yard up the top there um Dave's just trundling back and forth with the macro filling up logs into the into the container with the new dryer which is working well so yeah nice little aerial view of the site anyway guys So I've got both stirrers on now. I'm giving the bag a good stir, get the contents going. Pressure's quite high in the bag now. It's coming in about 1.9 bar. So it's okay. But I'll turn this, this stirrer off now. And um, we'll slowly start taking the gas out as well. So it's a bit of a wet day here. Um, We've done a chunk of wood here through the new machine. We've got the dried section there, it's starting to build up quite nice. We're really piling through our wet. Just a month ago or so, it was all the way out here. And Dave's on the telehandler bringing in some oak. So we'll put that through the machine. This was the last of our ash, which is on the bench here. Uh, which is all twisty and horrible. It's going to take Dave a bit of work to get this through the machine. And look at this one. This is a real nasty piece. No quick processing of these guys. Big chunky bit like that. It's going to stress it with knots on it and everything. Bit of the ash dye back there, chlamydia. Um, so, yeah. There we go. Fun and games for a bit. But this oak, um, I paid a lot for it. I was desperate, desperate for it, for wood in the winter. Um, and I really paid over the odds for this. 
but um, there it is. We'll process it, put it in through the through our heap, and you know, as long as you don't get too much oak, you're happy. Uh, but there's something about it. I paid a lot because it's absolutely gun barrel straight, um, so it'll fly through this machine. Um, it was actually meant for fence posts, apparently, rather than firewood. But there you go. It's gone in, going into firewood processing. Um, anyway, it's um, all going to get blended into our heap because no one wants too much oak in their bag. Okay, guys, um, we've been running for a couple of days. The patches have hold really nicely. Um, I'm running the pressure of the bag quite high, about 1.9. Um, we, uh, both engines are flat out. We've got good gas quality again. Initially, when I pumped it up, uh, the gas quality was quite low. Um, because there was a lot of um, CO2 in it, just because I pumped it up with air, and gradually it's, it's exhausted that air and started to juice me day. Um, so we were dipping down to about 46% uh, CH4, uh, which is about the bottom limit of where the engines will run at. Uh, but now we're nicely back into the 50s, so that's good. Uh, we've also got our separator working. Um, we had uh, two. Uh, two cat's asses that we had to put on because we just could not hold the, uh, the the material in the back of the plug which is up there on the tower and we're just pushing through and squirting out liquid uh, so we had to put two cat's asses in on there and that just giving it enough resistance because uh, we're obviously still running quite thin uh, on the mixture which is a bit kind of weird I thought it would have thickened up by now uh, with the amount of maize and barley that we're starting to stick in. Uh, the barley's going all right. It's actually kind of flowing through. As you can see, we don't, we haven't really humped this clamp up. Normally if it was maize, we would have got it another couple of meters higher, uh, but we haven't. And the barley just won't clamp, but it's having a good effect that it's not bridging in our, in our um, hopper here. And so the feeding's much better and I'm actually quite, quite enjoying in, uh, liking that process because we're not having bridges. So the, plants getting fed more regularly so that's that's all good uh, but we'll show you what else is going on and um yeah there we go so there's the separator and where you see that yellow band that's two cat's asses there flat stuck together and so super glad that that's holding because as i said we really need the liquid back into the tank uh, it was getting really sticky and as we're not getting any rain at all um it's just getting gloomier and gloomier in the tank um because we haven't been able to recirculate the liquid and you start getting problems when the um, vogelsang pump which is here at the back um starts to read it's just down there and they start to read one bar over one bar pressure you start to know that you're going to have some problems so um that's good to see so um yeah the gearbox has failed again on our massey um so that tractor i think we're gonna have to say goodbye to um because it's failed a couple of times now um so we're going to be looking for another tractor any thoughts much appreciated i was thinking i might get another another case the 5130 has been very good um so yeah we'll see see what we get so here's the maze guys um this is one of the better fields but this is this is where we did the vetch cover crop um and then cultivated it and then power harrowed it and um some of the rows just haven't come at all uh we've really had no rain for about two months here um a couple of five mils and that's been it but yeah crops just sitting here you know desperate for a bit of rain now they are promising something this weekend but we've heard that before so there we are um the stuff that we did the plow on looks a lot better um so i think next year we're going to be plowing all our maize ground and not trying to be too clever about getting regen farming happening uh, because we're just not getting the maize crops that we need so it's all very well for saying the plough isn't any good, but for our farm with this tough soil, it does seem to do the right job for the maize. Anyway, we'll see if we get that rain. So here we are in the top wood, guys. Um, uh, viewers of the videos will have seen we took this down last year, put this into firewood and wood chip, 
um, and it's all been sort of put out. We've just got Ray down the end there. There's the old Ford doing a bit of mowing. Try and keep all this sort of weed down. And we'll just have a little look inside these tubes. So there's one. Yep. Had a nice start to the year, but uh, that one looks like it might have died. Uh, oh, that one's still in there, little oak. Yeah, not quite sure if I can see anything in that one. Yep, little oak there. Another oak. So they are down here, but boy, I bet they could do with a drink. You know, so yeah, there we go. And he's just slowly mowing away. Uh, we got a whole heap of kind of um, trommel finds and slivers of wood. So we're gonna be turning those into kindling bags for clients. Dave's just screening it through the star screener. Taking out what you can. Stay away from that. And this is the stuff that's gone through the screener. So, yeah, there's still the odd bit in here, which is a bit long. It may have to be screened again, this. But we could probably chip that if need be and put it back into the wood chip pile. So, yeah, we'll get something out of all this, which is good. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed that vid and uh, yeah, we'll catch you next time.